versus hard vectors question. Let's take a look, boy. So the first one, similar concept actually, but one of them is significantly easier than the other. So in the easy question, we have a triangle, O to P, P to A is in the ratio two to one. B is the midpoint of OC. I'm just gonna put a line there to indicate they're the same length. M is the midpoint of AB. O to A is 6A. All right, so the first thing I'll be doing when I read this is trying to work out what these vectors are, okay? If the ratio is two to one, that's three parts. You're gonna do 6A, which is this whole length, divided by three, which is 2A. So this here is 2A, because that's worth one part. And then two of those would be 4A, okay? Notice I'm underlining the letters to indicate it's a vector. You don't have to do that, but it's good practice. O to B is 4B, so I'm just gonna get rid of this now. So that is 4B, but because A is the midpoint, it must mean that this is 4B as well. Show that PMC is a straight line. So prove that this is a straight line. Don't even kind of need a ruler, mate. So how do we do this? It's very simple to prove something is a straight line. So you just take one of the endpoints and you find two direction vectors and show they are parallel. Now, why is that? Say you have three points, one, two, three, okay? For these three points to be on the, or on the same straight line, it means if I was to draw a line from this point to this point, and then a line from this point to this point, they should overlap, yeah? Whereas, if I pick these three points, I can draw a line from here to here. Now, when I draw, from a, draw a line from here to here, you can see that it does not overlap this, yeah? Because these are not parallel lines, okay? So, we take an endpoint, we work out P to M, wherever that vector is, then we'll do P to C, and prove that they are parallel, because if they are parallel, it means these lines overlap each other, okay? So, where's my rubber? Here. Yeah. So, some students, because they're taught this way, they do PMMC. I don't like that because by P to C is a very easy vector to work out. Pick the endpoints, make your life simpler. P to M, M to C is way more awkward to find. In fact, P to C, you guys can just read it off the diagram already, okay? So, we're gonna do P to M. So, P to M. How do I go from P to M? Well, the quickest way is to go up to A and then to M. So, we're gonna go P A and then A M. And we know what P A is, we worked it out, it was 2A. And then A to M. Now A to M, M is the midpoint of AB. So I'm actually gonna say it's a half of A to B. All right. And then from there, we're gonna work out what A to B even is. So we have a half of. How do we go from A to B? Well, to go from A to B, we're gonna go back. You always use pathways that you know. So we're gonna go back. But you have to consider the arrows. Think of these as like an escalator. It only goes in one direction. Okay, so we're going the opposite of that. We're going negative of all of this stuff. So we're going negative 6a, yeah? This is 6a, this is negative 6a. So we're going negative 6a, and then, yeah, we're going negative 6a, and then 4b. Okay, and now we're gonna expand that. So that is p to m still. Uh, p to m is 2a, half of that minus 3a, and then half of that is 2a. So we are left with just 4a minus 3a, right? Huh? Wait, what? B, my bad. That is 2b. Okay. So, this guy, Mugen. What we got? We got uh, minus a plus 2b or 2b minus a. All right, so that's p to m. Now, let's do p to c. 
P to C, we're going back, so negative 4A, and then plus 8B, okay? So we're going minus 4A plus 8B, yeah? We're following that line. I'm going to write the positive one first. 4B, uh, no, this guy, man, 8B, yeah? 8B and then minus 4A. Now, this and this are parallel, but there's a better way of showing it. We can factorize out the 4, and what do you get? You get 2B minus A, okay? What do you notice? They are both multiples of the same vector, and that means they are parallel, okay? You can think of it as they maintain the same proportions, if in a very, uh, not really the same, but another way to think about it is if this was like the x and y axis, both of them are saying going two across, one down. These do not represent the x and y axis, but it's another way to think of like having the same gradient, okay? So we need to write an explanation here. We're gonna say they are both, so both, both PM and PC are multiples, I'll just say mult, of 2B minus A, therefore parallel. Remember, just being parallel is not enough. You could have two parallel lines, yeah, but they're not the same line. They have, you have to say that they have a common point, okay? When two parallel lines have a common point, they are on the same line, isn't it? So, therefore parallel and share a common point P. Therefore, parallel, uh, sorry, same straight line. Therefore, uh, what was it? PMC is a straight line. Cool. Let's take a look at this harder example. I mean, the only thing that makes it harder is that it's algebraic because we don't know a ratio, okay? So, what is this saying? We have this diagram. It says, an, A-N, is two lots of O to A. O to A is A. Obviously, guys, diagram is not to scale. So if an is two lots of OA, that means that the distance of an, this distance is twice this one. So this would be 2A, okay? O to B is just B. Uh, I didn't write, oh, they just put on the diagram. Why well, I put on the diagram? M is clearly in the middle because we've got these two lines here, okay? Now, I don't like to mess up the diagram too much. So if this is B and this is in the middle, what I like to say is that on each side is a half B, okay? In the exam, most likely they would just say M is in the middle. You can label it how you want, but I think this is the nicest way to do it. This A to P is K lots of A to B. So what does that mean? You can see that A to P is smaller than A to B, right? So this must be a fraction between zero and one, okay? Just as an example, it could be a third, okay? We're saying A to P is a third of A to B. So K is a fraction between zero and one. Now in the question, they've said given that MPN is a straight line, find the value of K. Okay, always start with this, obviously. What does it mean that MPN is a straight line? They're not saying prove like we did here. Here we proved it was a line, a straight line. Here they're saying it's a straight line. Meaning, this vector m to p must be parallel to m n. Okay, remember what we said, always pick the end points. It's gonna make your life easier, okay? So m p is parallel to m n. Now we can work out m n really easily. Yeah, it's basically on the diagram. To go from m to n, I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go back, that's gonna be minus 2b, yeah, we're going that way. So it's minus 2b, minus a half b, I mean. <laughs> Yo, uh, let me write that again. I'm not used to looking up and down, like it's uh, usually just, you have the diagram, you're looking in one place the whole time. So you, here I'm looking down and I'm forgetting what I even read. So we have minus a half b, and then we have 3a, okay? So minus a half b plus 3a. I'm gonna write that bit first. All right, we'll save that for later. Now we need to find m to p. 
Now, on initial thought, the quickest way to go from M to P would be here, here. However, in the question, they gave us A to P. They gave us this vector. So I don't want to go that way. I want to use the direction that they've given me in the question. So I'm going to go that way. Okay. So M to P. M to P. I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to have A. So I'm going to go M-O. Mo. Then I'm going to go Oa. And then I'm going to go App. Okay, so MP is Mo, which is minus half B. Oa, which is A. And then A to P is KAB. KAB. Which is, actually I'll just move downwards. So I have MP is minus a half B plus A plus K, lots of. Now, how do I go from A to B? Very simple. I go AO, AO, which is minus A plus B, yeah? Minus A plus B, or B minus A. Yeah, let's keep it positive. Now we need to expand that bracket. So we got MP is minus a half B plus A plus KB minus KA. Big up KA. Uh, grape flavor is the best. Now, this looks weird, yeah? We need to collect the like terms. So how do we do that? It's very simple. Imagine, so we have A. Imagine K was five. You would do one A minus five A, okay? Well, one minus five is minus four. What you're doing is you're reading the coefficients. You're doing one minus five A. So essentially what you're doing is you're factorizing, okay? You're saying one minus five A. You're writing the A once, aren't you? This is exactly what we're doing here as well. We are factorizing and saying what's the overall coefficient of a and what's the overall coefficient of b. For a it's 1 minus k. Remember the 5 was just an example, right? And then for b you have minus a half and then you have k. I'm going to write the positive one first. k minus half. Okay, great. Now, this is where the algebra comes into it. I mean, we've been using K, but we've not really done any proper algebra yet. What does it mean that these two are parallel? Because remember we said we're on, they're on the same straight line. Well, remember, parallel means that the proportions are maintained. Remember I gave you guys the example here and said, look, let this be the x-axis, let this be the y-axis. You're going two across, one down, okay? If you're to treat it like this as well, similar concept, say this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, you're going three across, half down. For this to be parallel, it must be going three across, half down, okay? So the proportion of this coefficient compared to this coefficient must be maintained, okay? Meaning, what do you need to multiply minus a half by to give you three? That's how we can work out the proportion, okay? To do that, you just do a division, okay? So you're saying minus a half times by what gives you three, yeah? And to find that, you just divide the numbers, okay? You're doing three divided by minus a half, yeah, which will be three times minus two, which is minus six, okay? So this times by minus six gives you this, okay? Minus a half times minus six is three. This has to say the same thing. That times minus six is this, okay? So look again. This times minus six is this, okay? So I'm saying minus six, lots of k minus a half is one minus k. And we need to solve that. So we get minus 6k when we expand, then it'll be plus, minus 6 times minus half is 3. We knew that already, actually. 
we did that before, is 1 minus k. Then we move this to this side, this to this side. 3 minus 1 is 2, is 5k. And there we go, guys. k is 2 fifths. And that is your answer. What is that? 0 0.4. I gave the example originally as a third. I mean, it's close enough. But anyway, guys, hard example, easy example. We are comparing the two because they both use this concept of a straight line. And in fact, when it comes to vectors at GCSE, this straight line vector stuff is the hardest stuff. Yeah, but here's a simple example, but using the same concept here. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. And if you're interested in my full GCSE courses, then check the link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next video. Nice.